Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpig. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here is your daily technical analysis of foreign exchange markets. Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpig. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here is your daily technical analysis of foreign exchange markets. Euro dollar. A bearish engulfing pattern on Friday with the highest high for last week and the second highest high for March. It was a combination of a bounce up from the two weeks ago, uh, up off the combination of the flatlining short medium moving average, currently 107.37, as well as the April 2020 low 107 and a quarter. You could also argue that it was also still an extension of the move up from the compound weekly key reversal up made three weeks ago as well as the testing and rejection of the trend lines from the old September to November 2022 ascending wedge pattern. Friday's peak has set up the opportunity for last Thursday, Friday being a possible pipe top and the last two weeks being a possible horn top. It will depend on what we do this week as to whether these two options will come true or not. We are still currently within a fairly clear area now up to the 50% Fibonacci line of the January 2021 to September 22 move at 109.44. The resistance, resistance has some form being capped, uh, having capped the market last week and also the week before and topped the market back at the very start of February. Beyond that, the next levels to look at are the July 2017 to November 2018 head and shoulders neckline currently at 111.08 and a congestion from March 2020 centered around the 111.39 area. Well so far today a slightly higher open then a move lower towards the May 2020 low at 107.66. They have since moved back up to just above where we have opened. Cable aka sterling against the US dollar. A counter to the counter bearish dark cloud cover pattern on Friday, but not before the market managed to reach up and fulfill target X in the 123 and 3 quarter area. This was the primary target of the February to early March descending wedge pattern. The secondary hard to reach target X1 is higher up at 125.90. And as I've said previously, and I quote, you would have to see a move up to the highs of June last year to achieve that as well as making a possible monthly key reversal up in the process, end of quote. Well, let's now address the elephant in the room. You see, we have made a monthly key reversal up for March, if only just. So it'll be interesting to see if this bearish pattern at the top of the market, whether it will be the, and the, actually the highest we've seen since late January, we'll be interested to see if there'll be any more in the tank for the bullish incentive. Friday's fall was halted by the first level of support below, and that's the 50% Fibonacci on the June 2021 to September 2022 move at 123.16. An interesting level to stop short at. Now, so far today, a slightly lower open, a test down through the 50% Fibonacci line, but not by much, having stopped short of the June 2020 low at 122.48. And we've since moved back up over the 50% Fibonacci line and last Friday's close. Euro sterling. A bearish engulfing pattern on Friday, which wasn't that hard to do considering the previous session was an indecisive doji cross. The market continues to be supported nearby by the flatlining medium moving average, currently 87.80.80. However, in the slightly bigger picture, the market seems to be moving in between the August 22 to date down, uh, sorry, uptrend, that's below, currently at 87.46, and the overhead recent downtrend, currently at 88.81. Now, for, for clarity's sake, they are not forming, they're not forming a sideways triangle because frankly, they're not good enough, not yet. But I'm mindful of the overhead 50% Fibonacci line of the March 2020 to March 2022 move at 88.51. So far today, well, not much. The market is still supported by the medium moving average and doesn't seem to be wishing to try higher. We're still within last Friday's range and looking like an indecisive doji cross at the moment. US dollar against Indian rupee. An immediate countering bullish piercing line pattern on Friday. This was due, once again, to the proximity of four supportive factors. The first two 
with a slowly rising medium moving average currently 82.23 and the likewise slowly, ri short, uh, slowly rising short medium moving average currently 82.19. Now these are good but no match for this market as prices moved up be moved below both on Thursday and Friday. However, they've useful been useful in eroding the bearish incentive and letting two other factors take control of the market. These are thirdly, the optimized lower trend line in dark blue, uh, currently 8209, of the 2023 proposed ascending triangle pattern. And finally, the August 22 to date uptrend, currently 8197. That prompted me my drawing in part of the ascending triangle pattern in the first place. Meanwhile, overhead, we have the upper time currently at 82.75 highlighted in dark green on my daily chart of the October 22 to early January this year bearish shift pitchfork and the upper trend line currently 82.97 of the sideways triangle in dark blue. Now this sideways triangle is the current dominant pattern here but I suspect we may be coming to a cusp possibly within April. Now, so far today a reactionary gapping open and move back up higher we are back well within the sideways triangle, but we're looking to fill that gap at the moment. US dollar against the Brazilian real. A sixth bearish black crow on Friday and a second consecutive close below the influential 38.2 Fibonacci line of the June 2019 to May 2020 move at 510.87. This was the lowest close since the start of February and the third lowest close this year. Price is now approximately midway between the upper time, currently at 5.19.35, and the middle time below, currently at 4.96.33, of the broken late July to late September 2022 bearish shift pitchfork. This is highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart. Now the pitchfork is still influential despite having been broken though I am minded to look more towards a pattern that was created by this very pitchfork and that is the November 2020 to date bear channel currently at 488.91 to 538.52 and it's highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. These were complementary to each other with, as I pointed out, one giving birth to the other. But I am minded to think the bear channel is becoming the more dominant pattern right now. But then over all of this is still the shadow of the monthly key reversal down we saw in January. US dollar against the Mexican peso. A bearish engulfing pattern on Friday, which wasn't that hard to do, given that Thursday was an indecisive doji cross. We're still well within the breached, arguably broken bear channel, currently at 1788.18 uh, to 1903.17, that has repaired itself and is highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart. We're actually quite close to testing the lower bear channel line. We also still have two other significant features on my daily chart. Firstly, and close by, is the neckline currently at 1790.51 and highlighted in purple on my daily chart of the February to April 2021 head and shoulder sob, which has acted as the latest roadblock in this market's journey south. Meanwhile above, we have the neckline in bright green currently at 1857.34 of the January to May 2021 head and shoulders top. This neckline had been important in February when it was getting tested but has since diminished after the subsequent move lower but it's still there and recently has had the declining short medium moving average currently at 1852.89 as company. So far today a small but continuing move lower down into some minor congestion from early March between 1810 to 1793 and a half that was probably created by the combination of the lower bear channel line and the purple, the purple neckline back at the beginning of March. Thank you for listening. This short version broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.